Welcome back, everybody. This is video number 55 of our how-to school, and we went through spring. We did a bunch of planting, and it's time for some harvesting as well. So let's do a little review here real quickly. So uh, let me get this trailer out of the way here. We're currently harvesting all the barley we planted last fall. Uh, we're in July already, and uh, I'm going to get it over here and get it to unload here, and then we'll take a quick trip around the block. The first thing I want to remember from our last video is... Uh, we cut our first grass in April, and we went ahead and made all the bales and all that kind of stuff. We got those bales off uh, the land there, and uh, let's go here. Uh, and then we went ahead and we planted some stuff. So this is our test block. This is our how-to. This is uh, not our how-to test block, but this is our block that we said we were going to plant that shows our uh, sugar beets. This is our first crop that we haven't done yet. I'm going to show you how to grow. So basically, you have to use a, a planter. Now, you can't use your regular cedar. Uh, let's go to the store really quick and take a look. You have to use, we look through here, something called a planter. You cannot use, I mean, I think it's the planter. Let me check here. Did I get it mixed up? Let me make sure I don't get it wrong. Yes. Yes, you have to use what's called a planter right here. This is a direct injection and planter, so it has to be one of these planters here. You always check down here and look. See, there's the sugar beet. This does sugar beet, soy, corn, everything else like that. This is the planter that you use. You cannot plant sugar beets with your regular cedar that you use for wheat and corn and barley and oats and canola and stuff. So it's a different thing. It's a planter, not a cedar. Okay? So that's what required. When you plant it and it's about two months old, it looks like this. So you go ahead and let it grow. It just You need your normal fertilizer. You need to have the two applications so that it turns dark blue. So let's take a quick look at that. Here's all of our stuff growing and harvesting. And here's our fertilizer. And uh, those are these are being harvested right now. So here's our test block. See, and it's nice dark blue. It's fertilized really well. So that's what we need. And then usually it gets harvested late in the fall. Um, so let's look at our little uh, thing over here. We're going to go to sugar beets. And sugar beets grow right here. And then they get harvested in October or November. Okay? So we've got three or four months away before they get harvested. They, too, take a special machine. There's a couple of different ways to harvest those. And when we get to that point, uh, I will buy one of each, and we'll take a look at them, and I'll show you how it works. So let's hop back in and let's see what else we do. At the same time, we planted a bunch more corn. Now remember, we had a new field. Uh, so we have this field here that we added on, this section here. And we had those two big sections over here. Uh, I went ahead and planted corn in this small one in the front here. And then I also planted uh, corn over here in our two new blocks that we have in the front here, wherever that little mountain was there by the front of the co-op. Now, this little section right here, I'm going to do a study on the same plot of land, different crops, and how much they make. So we're going to take this corn here, we're going to put it in its own little silo someplace, and when we sell it, we're going to look at it, and we're going to put it on a spreadsheet. And as we go through the different crops, each year, or each fall or spring, we're going to plant a different crop here. So we're going to see flat out which makes us the most money. Is it corn? Is it wheat? Is it oats? Is it what is it? Okay? So here's all our barley. We're harvesting all that. And so I planted corn there, there, and there, and across the road. So we have a bunch of corn. And uh, not only do we plant corn, and here's our beautiful barley. I love the way you're running it in there. Now, barley does make less uh, less per dollar than wheat. Barley is about $1,000 per thousand instead of 1800 But I believe you, you uh, get more barley per acre. I'm not sure about that. That's part of what our testing is going to have to give us. Okay. So these rung here and all the other ones over by our, our grass and everything else that you see that are green are soybeans again. Why soybeans? Because they make us good money. Now after we sold our silage and we did all the other stuff like that, we have a million dollars in the bank when we sold our corn and everything else and our silage that was left. But guess what? Our first cutting we still have. And where do we put that first cutting? Whoa! That was a trick. Our first cutting of silage, uh, we stored it uh, over off to the side here on some neighbor's property. Probably not the best place to put it, but uh, they said that was okay, that we could store it over there. So let's take a quick look over here. We, we have fertilized this. We have pushed a month past. It probably should still be growing. I don't think it's ready to harvest again. 
And if it is, then wow, we're really... And yep, second cutting of grass is ready to harvest in July. So we got grass to do and harvest to do both. Soybeans. Anyway, if you look way down there at the very front by the tree line, you can't even see it, but I'm just telling you, way down there by the front next to the co-op is where all of our silage bales are sitting. And those could be sold any time. Since we have a million dollars in the bank, I'm going to wait and sell those at the peak in December. So we're just going to keep stacking silage there until we can do that. As long as we don't run out of money, um, we can always sell it if we're, if we're broke, but we're not broke. So at this point, what do we need to do? We need to cut grass and bale it again. And we need to turn around and we need to harvest all this barley. And then we need to get all those fields ready because we can plant in the fall again. And I think in the fall, we're going to go ahead and plant probably uh, wheat again. So let me go ahead and pause it. Let's get this finished done. Let's get all this harvesting here. I got guys waiting for me to unload their trucks. And I will see you all in a few minutes. All right, everybody, we're back. So we've harvested all the barley. And we got all this cut up and put into bales. We've got six of them on the trailer right there. So we still need to fertilize this. But I wanted to show you uh, everything else looks good. Um, the other bales are, are clear down there at the very end, all the way to the front. There's 48 there, so we ended up with uh, 51 bales both times. So that's pretty good. 51 bales both times. And so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and see if we have anything we need to sell in July that's left. Um, we may have soybeans to sell, I believe it is in July. So we'll need to take a look at that and see if that's the case. We may have corn to sell, so is it July or August? Uh, we need to get these fields planted by uh, the end of August so they can be ready for fall planting if we choose to do so. So uh, let's take a look. Also, our barley did really well. Um, we got 606,000 liters of barley, so there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, okay, so we did, we did go ahead and sell our soybeans and our corn, so that's already been done. So we sold everything we need to do except for our barley, and see our barley, 700, and, what is it here, $1,100 in December, January, so we'll sell that in a few months. Uh, the reason why I have some left in here is that I'm not going to sell or go grab just a partial truck. It's just not worth it for me at this point. So um, what else are we going to do over here? Well, I want to do a couple other little things here while we're at it, and what those things are is I want to show you... Um, one little quick one on this one here is we're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna get some new stuff, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here on the homestead here. And what we're gonna do, just because we you've never learned how to do this before, is I'm gonna show you how easy it is, and I mean easy it is to uh, to do a greenhouse. Um, greenhouses are not that expensive. So we're going to production here, and here's uh, factories and other things like that. And we're going to go down here until we get to methane production. No, selling points, no archers, no greenhouses right there. Okay, so we have this large greenhouse. We have medium-sized greenhouse. We have small greenhouses. We have flowering nurseries greenhouses, and we have mushroom greenhouses. We're just going to do a standard large greenhouse. They are 10 grand a piece, and they're not too bad. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come right out over to here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put one right there, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put one little space in between right there, and I'm going to put one right there. So we spent $30,000 and we put in some greenhouses, okay? Now I need to go to landscaping here, and I need to go to painting, and I'm going to go ahead and gravel around them, okay? So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, make our graveling just a little bit bigger here, and I'm going to go ahead and just... Now I want enough room... Uh, so we can farm around this one here a little bit. We don't need a ton of room around them. So. There we go. Just enough to turn around the back side. And then we're going to come over to here. 
Now you can put them pretty much anywhere you want. And the cool thing about greenhouses is all you have to do is pick a crop and provide water to them and you are done. It is that easy. So we're going to go ahead and make this up full size now here and we're just going to go ahead and bring in more gravel here. Uh, gravel is can be expensive. Okay. And then let's go right here. And we'll spray right there. We'll, we'll spray around the back here. Okay, and then we're going to make it smaller and do this side right here. Okay, so let's take a look around it, make sure you didn't miss anything. Nope, and everything's good. So here's where you, you would go. Now what you normally do is uh, you would take your tractor in and you will buy, you take your tractor into town and you buy a large water tank. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to go into town, we're going to buy a water tank. Okay. Because they're hydroponic greenhouses. And they use water. Okay. Or they don't grab, they're rolling soil, but they need water to grow. Okay. You don't have to put any fertilizer in them or anything else like that. So let's run into town here really quickly. And we still have 979,000. Now we can pick up a small tanker or a big tanker. Um, I want to get the biggest tanker that we can get. Because you don't have to make as many trips. Um, those, each of those uh, water systems can hold quite a bit of water. Um, I believe it's 20,000 liters or 12,000 liters. So let's go ahead and, and go up here and take a look. Um, everything else is the same. We're still in July here. So like I said, we're going to start some greenhouses. And then we're going to put them on the cell production. So you can see how you have to go grab them, put them on the trailer, um, and take and sell them. And you can do lettuce, and you can do tomatoes. And you can do strawberries okay so we're almost there each of those greenhouses the largest ones were only ten thousand dollars and they do bring in an extra little income you can set them to automatically sell so you don't have to worry about taking them into town all you have to do is worry about water and later on if you want to spend the money you can put them on an automatic watering system so pretty much they're hands-free at that point okay but for right now to be able to learn from the very beginning we need to go look at water tanks. So here we go, and we're going to go down here, and we're going to look at uh, miscellaneous stuff here. And let's see what we have for water tanks. So we have this big one here. Bio, it's a biogas tank. It's not a water tank. And it's 8,000 liters. So we'll go back. And let's see. Yeah, see, it says for biogas. Okay. This one here, this is a water tank. So let's go back. See down here? This one. So you can use it with water. It's 8,000 gallons, and you can use it for biogas. This one here will do water, liquid fertilizer, uh, biogas, a bunch of stuff. So, and this one is much larger. Instead of 8,000, this one is 32,000. So it's quite a big one, but it takes a semi-truck to run it. So that's okay. We have a big semi-truck. Um, 68,000. We're just going to get the cheap one for now. Um, because we're not going to have to use it a whole lot. Okay, we only have three greenhouses. Got it? Okay, done. And as soon as we can afford it, probably next year, we will go ahead and we will put in an automatic uh, watering system. So we don't have to worry about it. Water will keep it. Water automatic watering system will come from the lake over there. And it will make everything work really, really good. So let's go connect up to it here. Just like that. And we'll run back and we'll get some water. Now we go over to our water tower, which was already installed when we bought the farm. And all we do is we grab that and we 
uh, fill the tank full of water. So we have to go up to the actual tower, get out, turn the valve, and it fills our tank for us. And then we go over and we drive to each of the greenhouses and we deposit the water. Once that's done, then all we have to do is go in and set up the water, it, it set up each greenhouse um, for what type of crop we want to have it grow. So as soon as we get back there, we'll be there in just a second. We'll get the water and uh, we'll be all set. So what are you planning on doing? Um, I need to figure out what I'm going to do for fall planting. I have choices between barley and wheat. I can also just say, hey, I'm not going to plant anything this fall. Um, or I'm not, maybe not plant as much. Uh, yeah, it brings in good money, but, you know, do I make more money off the spring planting? Mm, I know I make a lot more money off soybeans. Uh, what do you think? What's what's your what's your plan? Or do you say, hey, I want to spend some more money on some infrastructure. Maybe I want to some, buy some more equipment, or maybe you want to buy uh, some more land and expand with that. Uh, what are you going to do this fall to, to help your spring uh, be a good planting? One of the things I like about spring planting and some stuff, for instance, is I can plant oats in the spring, harvest them, and then turn around and plant that same field again in the fall and get a double plant every other year. That's pretty cool. So we're coming around the corner here, and we're going to line up with our water tank here. And all we do is we pull right up in front of it like this, and we jump out. We run around the end here. And we touch the less mouse button, and it turns our valve. Okay, and then all we have to do is go back up in here and hop into our thing. And start filling the tank. We press R, and away it goes. And it doesn't fill very fast. If you notice, it's not the fastest filling tank there. So... We, we open the valve, and then R is opening the valve in the tank, and that starts it to fill. So there we are. We're about a third full, coming up on a half full here in a little bit. Um, so one thing about the thing on here in the farm, uh, Sim 22, is the, the water systems are just really slow. Um, they do take quite a bit of time. That's why putting it in a, an automatic system as soon as you can afford it is probably one of the best things to do. Um, it'll really help you to be able to. Uh, be able to go out there and take care of things and and uh, not spend as much time. Greenhouses are cool. They're a great little income. Uh, they do make money year-round. Um, okay, there it is. Almost full, and we're done. So now all we have to do is uh, take that, turn around, and run over to our greenhouses here on the end where the blue barrel is, and we pull up to the greenhouse, and we fill it for water. So what you do is you come up like this, then you pull up right next to it like this. Okay, see there it says water, and you use the same uh, right click in the Y key like you did uh, when you were uh, you're dumping your trailers, and it's emptying all that into the barrel. Okay, almost like I said, I think it's twelve thousand. You have to take probably one and a half, two trips per. Now at this point we can jump out here and let's go look at our greenhouses over here. Greenhouses are under um, production, which is right here. So here's our greenhouse. Now this one doesn't have any water. This one doesn't have any water. So it's probably this one here that has it. So see, there's water there. Now now we can pick. Do we want to grow tomatoes? Do we want to grow lettuce? Do we want to grow strawberries? Uh, let's start out with some tomatoes, okay, just for giggles. So we'll take this one here, and I'll say activate. And that'll work just fine. So not a problem. And then uh, I'm going to tell tomatoes over here and tell instead of storing tomatoes, uh, I'm I, over here you can change the output type. We can take storing, selling, or distributing. A distributing means it sells them automatically for you, uh, uh, distributes out to other restaurants. So say you had a pizza place or something like that on the map, it would distribute the tomatoes to the processing plant automatically. Uh, storing basically just puts them on pallets outside of the greenhouse and selling sells them automatically. So what we're gonna do for now is we're just gonna say storing. Now I also noticed on this one, I just clicked on this one here, we're gonna do lettuce on this one here, that we have automatic, automatic uh, irrigation installed. So we can activate that, we say yes, and the water fills automatically. So that's cool, so we don't have to do any more watering. At least you know how to do it if you don't know how to do it. I'm gonna activate that one there, and then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna activate it here on this greenhouse. 
So our water is all taken care of. 20,000 liters would have taken two and a half trips per tank. And on this one here, we are going to activate strawberries. And the middle one here, we're going to activate lettuce. So what's happening here now is we are growing in one greenhouse, we're growing tomatoes, uh, strawberries, and when we're growing lettuce, and when we're going to grow strawberries. Uh, yep, tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberries. And so there it is. That's it. And we'll take those. Uh, we'll have them store them outside the, the uh, each of the greenhouses there. And then what we'll do is when we go to sell them, we'll see which one makes us the most money. And which one in a one or two month period, how much the production is on them too. You know, they may make you a lot of money, but if it takes three times more to produce one than the other, then that's a, that's a big difference there. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment. What are you doing on your farm? Have a great day.